Hey guys, it's Shannon from I Radio Canada here with Joel, aka Dead Mouse. How are you? I'm well. Yeah. How's your pandemic been treating you? How has it been treating me? Wow. If I had a nickel, um, yeah, it would be treating me a lot better if I had a nickel for every time someone asked me how you, how has it been treating you? Uh, it's been treating me much like it has been treating everyone and the entire economy and uh, everyone's mental state. Right now, I have being cop- cooped up, not being able to see our relatives, loved ones, and stuff. Well, cautiously, but it's getting a little, well, I think, you know, socioeconomically better in the sense that people are, are becoming more relaxed. Uh, I'm not sure about the actual state of uh, the pandemic itself. Yeah, it is. It's a thing that's like um, that we all are kind of dealing with. So I think. That's why, but I've heard that you say that you're a pro at isolation. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm I'm really good at avoiding people. I've been practicing social distancing since 2004. Because of the fact that you can't travel and do shows and all these things, does that just mean that you're utilizing the time then to just work on more music? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I'm always working on music. I'll always find a way to to sit down and get ideas out. Either you know, whether it's I've been touring for like you know a couple months and I couldn't do anything, I'll get home and I'll do like you know, four or five tracks in a week. Um, it's kind of the, the same schedule here, but now it's more about, um, you know, uh, business restructuring, keeping uh, our staff, you know, employed and happy uh, and paid. Uh, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of that. A lot of finding ways to keep the business modular and, you know, innovative with all the new parameters have been bestowed upon us by the plague. So that's that's kind of been my focus um, because uh, I'm, I'm also a label operator and owner. Uh, we I, I do employ, you know, a staff. Uh, so that kind of my responsibilities lay there as opposed to, you know, just kind of thinking, well, I'll go all free time. I think I'll just make music and f- my touring crew they'll be all right because when we start touring they'll you know no i mean i gotta i gotta put the the big boy pants on and um make sure that all these kind of things are being taken care of yeah absolutely i know you seem like you're the type of person that just like does so many different things do you is that stem from the fact that you just like get bored easily or do you just always like challenge yourself like where does that come from uh it's probably a bit of both i i do get bored easily and if it really was just up to me having to make music all day uh every day 24 7 seven days a week then yeah that would, that would probably make me insane um i i, I guess i kind of like being a, a master of practical dichotomies uh so i will you know delve into uh, most recently like game development um for a, a certain project i'm working on um that's not going to replace by a long shot the you know the process of going to a show and being there and, and interacting with other people i mean that's like a this big kind of buzz that's been going around is these virtual shows it's like virtual dude nothing's going to replace that ever you know nothing's going to replace you know sweating in a piece of car for three hours to drive to ohio to watch reo speedwagon for an hour and a half and then get drunk with your friends after you know that that no computer program or virtual concert is going to replace that um and we won't even come close but it's what we have to work with right now and and that's something i'm kind of developing towards um but also kind of in parallel with the way my current live show works so that that way there will be crossover between the two when we are allowed to bring our toys outside and get within four feet of each other do you think the pandemic is like almost um evolving the music industry in a way because no it's get over huge uh, yeah. Because because there's a lot of there's a lot of the music industry that is just about the music industry, not about reshaping companies, thinking of new ideas and, 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 and doing all this stuff. There's a lot of people that are truly f-ed in the sense that they can't uh, they can't adapt to not going out and getting paid 100 grand to hit a space bar. You know, yes. Yeah. It just makes the most sense. Uh, um, so, but but for the creative, for for the guy who's got you know f- five million in f-ing liquid sitting in his bank account because he's been robbing the shit out of f-ing Vegas nightclubs, then yeah, he's f-ing laughing his ass off because, all right, cool, like I can afford meals for the next f-ing six months, and uh, I'm just gonna make music. So yes, there will be an influx of production and creativity and, and stuff like that, all on different levels, you know. But um, I, I I think moreover the everything's just taken a a massive hit 
uh, in the sense of, you know, companies who aren't able to adapt and, and do modular things and they re-interconnect with their fan bases and their clients or, or however they need to via just the internet or a screen. Yeah. And I think we'll just get an influx of like new music from people too, because that's what they're, that's yeah. what they can do. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why not? Right. Like, <laughs> Okay, we've been home for six months. So, I mean, if you don't have more than three tracks out by now, then maybe you should take up a different hobby. Um, I want to talk about Pharrell, the Neptunes. I know that you two have known each other for a while now. I remember watching your coffee yeah. run back in 2013. Um, How did you guys... We were aware of each other's existence. Uh, I <laughs> wasn't on my speed dial. We don't play Xbox together. You know, like, nice guy. Don't get me wrong, but it's just not... Yeah, but how did you two originally connect, and then how did how did it evolve into this collaboration? Um, weird ass story, actually. Um, my sister uh, worked uh, at a; she was an event manager for Holt Renfrew. Okay, if that makes any sense, she procured events for kind of the do wells and celebrities and stuff with clothing lines for Holt Renfrew. And Pharrell had a thing called the Billionaires Boy Boys Club. I I, I don't know. I never. Yeah, that's what it is. Wasn't into that. Okay, um, so she kind of basically curated that line for Canada, and she did events kind of around that thing. And one of those events involved, you know, obviously him going to do a. Rub shoulders with whole Renfrew people at the Soho house in Toronto. My sister told me, she said, hey, that Pharrell guy's coming to this thing. You should come by because you've got this goofy membership. You might as well use it once. And I was like, all right. So I went and um, just just to be, you know, kind or whatever, when I meet the guy, shake his hand and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, he, he got chatty. And I thought that was kind of cool because, you know, I don't. Um, and I just said, well, I do do this weird thing where I get in the car and we go get coffee. I, you know, it's just like, you don't have to bet if you want and you're not doing anything tomorrow. Uh, he's like, yeah, I'm down. And then I was immediately waiting to hear like, oh, here's my manager and my agent and na na na. And here's where you get the clearance. He's like, yeah, just come pick me up at the hotel. And I was like, all right. So I showed up and like, a, only because I didn't have to deal with a manager and an agent or a handler or any other weird that some people go through um uh and he got in and we just started you know it, it's kind of funny as you watch it because um when he got in the car and i was in the car and he gets in we, we didn't know each other at all so the conversation was, starts out really slow but then after like about a half hour then we can start to like kind of get to know each other and then the, the discussion opened up a bit more there were some laughs and all that stuff so it was, it was actually pretty interesting and then that's when i kind of felt him out as a person um and uh, i just like wow what a great guy you know cool like totally unintrusive normal fucking talented guy so uh i had this track laying around for about five years uh that as pomegranate not as you hear it but just more in a scratched out version um and it just sat there and uh there was some talk about you know just kind of maybe meeting up for lunch uh at, in miami because he he's part owner of a restaurant that my wife really likes and we didn't i didn't know that she's like oh yeah i mean you know and i was like <laughs> food's good <laughs> you know like, sure let's go there and she goes well whatever and then uh, through some management you know said well you should get lunch uh, because he's there in town during fashion week and i said oh yeah that'd be cool i'd like to see him again um and then we got talking about music and stuff and i said oh you know what i got this f***ing weird idea that you know that you might like and you know send it over i guess he nodded his head and um so yeah come on down to miami and we'll go into the studio and record some stuff and i was like okay well that's what i like to do so we went down to um uh, criteria studios which is like the studio apparently because you go in there and then f travis scott's in there everybody's in there and it's like what the f is this like it's like the Miami Soho house. Um, and he gets on the mic, starts humming away some just scratch ideas. He didn't just belt it out in one take, but you know, and he, but man, he's really talented. Like I, I, and take it from me. I've heard so many like singers that sound like, but you're like, ah, oh, it. We'll, we'll fix it in post. We'll throw some auto tune on it and do whatever. You'll sound great. And then you deal with it. But this guy's a natural talent. Like he's really on. Uh, and I was like, oh, me. All right. Um, and then of course, Chag comes in and just one shots his on a, on a Moog. And I was like, wow, you know, I like, I like working with, with 
fucking professionals, man. This is great. Okay. If you want to stem these out, hand them off to your engineer and then send them back. I'll mix it in and we'll call it a day. It was a, it was a really great collab in the sense that, you know, everybody knew what they had to fucking do and they did it. And there was no, b no back and forth. No, Hey, I think you should, you know, yeah. and as soon as that kind of talk starts, I just like, <laughs> Stay in your lane, dude. <laughs> you know, I don't, I, I don't tell you how to sing. Don't tell me how to make beats, you know? And yeah. And I feel like that's probably something that you have to deal with constantly with like collaborations is. No, you don't. Cause you don't, you, you don't have to do a collaboration if you don't want, yeah, you know? So yeah, yeah I, I, I bet you it's a lot. Uh, I bet you it's a thing. A lot of artists endure, but when you can pick and choose, I mean, come on. So I read that you were going to debut your album at Coachella. Did it, is it then put off now because of the pandemic? I read that you were going to release your album at Coachella. Per, like, yeah. View it. So, is it is the pandemic the reason that the album hasn't come out? No, there's no album done. Uh, we were going to release that single, I think. Uh, Coachella, not not album. I'm kind of okay. I'm kind of holding that deck close till like probably fall. I'm I'm kind of stockpiling a lot because I want to put out another proper album, not some. F here's seven tracks that you all know that i've done over the last you know year and uh in on and off stream and you've all heard it a million times but you know we need an album so here it is so i figured i was just gonna wait uh, and culminate that while i also you know kind of work on you know company restructuring and direction and other opportunities that we can kind of play off of to get to a release point which don't take my word for it but tentatively speaking october november I think would be a good time. Um, I don't know. I'm just a little concerned about what's going to happen when, when the world starts opening up again. Like, I mean, it's all good and great. And of course, everybody's going to want to go out and party, but I don't know, man, that's just kind of weird. That's like, this going to be this huge oversaturation, you know, fees are going to be down to shit, which is fine because it's all relative to the economy anyway. Uh, it's just going to be oversaturation city, which I'm surprised it's not already in terms of music release, but I, it's been from what I can tell pretty, pretty calm business as usual, you know? Right. You think it's just going to pick up and explode in, in, in the, in the live event space. Yeah. 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 Maybe William Morris can make some of that money back. <laughs> awesome. Well, I won't uh, take up too much more of your time. So thank you so much for chatting. I really appreciate it. Yeah. From. No 